fast forward again, CNC. What is CNC? Ah, oh, it'll never last. This is, you know, it's just a fad. Well, we soon learn that either you jump on board or you're going to be thrown overboard. Well, if you want to know the history of LNZ, you really have to date back to 1915. That is the year in which my dad, an immigrant from Sicily, arrived on the shores of America thinking that it was paid with gold. Unfortunately, he was handed a shoebox, sent out, and said, you got to shine shoes, son, because we need money. Of course, they said that in Italian, not in English. And with that, his uh, career of working began, and he did every odd job you can imagine, eventually becoming a toolmaker. Now that was, uh, before that, he dug ditches, uh, he did anything imaginable he could to earn a dollar for the family, worked in a candy factory, bring candy home at night, all sorts of things. But ultimately, uh, through a family connection, he had the opportunity to begin to work in a tool shop and ultimately became a top-end toolmaker, mole maker. And his ultimate goal was to be in business. For himself. So in 1952, he chose a partner, and thus the words L and Z. As time went on, as many partnerships, it really wasn't working out, and he was able to uh, borrow enough money to buy out the partner, and the name still remains. And this kind of interesting story: I was a youngster, said, "Dad, let's change the name. Let's change it to our last name, Lamarcus." Son, I worked 14 months to establish this name. I'm not going to give it up. Well, here we are 70 years later. While we are the Lamarca family, we still have the name LNZ Tool. Uh, years ago, we didn't have all this modern equipment and everything you did required a lot of hand finesse and hand work. My dad was a master at that. He had the ability to sculptor. And so machines could just take you so far. They could do curves, they could do straight lines, but they couldn't do the blends. They couldn't bring things together. And thusly, someone on the bench, like my dad, had the capabilities with a hand, chisel, and files, and he'd bring those contours together and ultimately produce a product of things like a, a beautiful orange squeezer that had a lot of contours and curves on it, or a piece for an Electrolux vacuum cleaner that, again, was not done with CNC equipment. So as we travel through this evolution of LNZ tool, Dad was always looking for the better way. He heard about EDM a way of removing steel by electrical discharge and machining. He began to investigate that and bought the very first EDM machine in New Jersey. And thus we were able to create shapes that you can't create by ordinary milling by electrical discharge machining. But along with that, he always was into contours. He loved contours and he always wanted a better way to do a contour. And thusly, he turned to machines that were made in Germany called Deckels, which are very similar to engraving machines that your jeweler might have, where you engrave your initials in a piece of jewelry. Well, these are machines that would allow you to make 3D shapes by utilizing a model that you would basically trace, and you would, by hand manipulation, uh, cut with a round cutter, an end mill as it's called, and create the shape in steel. Well, that was great, but it was, again, manual. Then came electronic stylus, and that uh, was a very sensitive stylus, which was electronically controlled the machine, and ball screws were another thing that came into advent at the time, as opposed to just your normal screws and nuts and machines. And so we got into a higher-end machine with ball screws, electronic styluses, and we were doing a lot of contour work utilizing that. Fast forward again. CNC. What is CNC? Oh, it'll never last. This is, you know, it's just a fad. Well, we soon learn that either you jump on board or you're going to be thrown overboard. And so uh, we got our first CNC machine. As I explained to you earlier, I didn't want to take a chance at that point in time. My dad had since passed and uh, I was kind of carrying the torch on my own. And I purchased a machine that could do both things. It could either do CNC, or you could turn it and use it as a duplicator. So I thought, worst comes to worst, we'll be duplicating things if this CNC stuff doesn't work out. Well, it obviously proved that CNC was a faster way to go. Well, then came 
computerization. While there were already computers, they were very large. IBM had computers that were fit into a big, large room, as opposed to the compact computers that suddenly came along. So we bought our first computer. Well, we began to do simple things at computer, but then we began to learn about software. Software? What's software? Well, there's all kinds of software, and there's different levels, and how could we utilize it in our business? Well, software's for contours. Wow, how about that? We can make one contour blend into another. We could take that and create a program, and we could go onto our CNC machine and feed that program. This is great stuff. We've got to try this. And once again, we got into the software world and we began to use software called Symmetron, which had two possibilities. One was CAD for designing, and you could take that same program and bring it out into the plant environment and use it for CAM where you were machining. So with that program, we were able to even reach greater heights. And with purchasing CNC machines where we could drip feed, as the expression was called, into these machines from our computer, we would begin to cut contours. So once again, it's been an evolution. And then as we fast forward, we got in from three axis to four axis, and now we're heavily into five axis. And five axis, uh, frankly, without it, I don't think we could be as competitive. So let's talk about competition. You cannot be competitive if you don't stay on the cusp of technology. So I like to think that what was ingrained in me by my dad was always look for the better way, always look for the better tool. And you know at home, if you use a hand screwdriver, it takes you a while. If you use a power screwdriver, you get it done a lot faster. Well, put that in this environment. If you have the right tool, you're going to get there faster, more economically, and be more competitive. And to be competitive, uh, it's a whole new world out there. And that is one of the reasons why we have lost so many of the artisans in our country, the tool makers, the mold makers. Uh, they didn't move with the times. And if you move with the times, you can remain competitive, but then you're also competing against a world stage. And that's a, a greater problem. The world stage is one that's very difficult to compete with because the economics of America versus the economics of a, a foreign country are so vastly different. And while technology is growing and it's perfecting, and you're doing a lot of things that were done by hand with machinery and technology and software, you are not able to, once again, dream the dream. The computer doesn't design the mold. The computer doesn't have the vision that you have. You have to input it. So you input it into the computer and you come up with a better product to work with, but at the end of the day, uh, you need to be competitive. I am very fortunate in that I have three sons, as well I have a daughter, but my three sons have taken an interest and they've all done their time in terms of working on the shop floor and have become proficient at uh, most every operation. That having been said, um, we all agree that we must continually improve, we must stay on top of things, we must run a small corporation like a big corporation. Therefore, we are ISO certified, uh, and that's very important to some customers. I have long felt that it gives us a manual by which to follow. So if we act like a big company, even though we are a small company, and we give the same benefits and treat our people maybe even better than a big company, then that will give us a wholesome organization that they can continue with. And they believe in the same ideals that my dad believed in and I believe in, and we've been able to continue um, in that fashion. Uh, Lance Lamarca, I am third generation here at LNZ Tool and Engineering. Um, and for better or worse, I was bored into this trade. Um, so I grew up in the shop on the weekends, uh, coming down with my father, meeting all the guys, playing with the machine, sweeping the floor, and gradually uh, worked my way up through machining um, and, and running some of the various machines. Um, then I would spend my summers in high school, uh, working in the shop, went off to college, and after college came back and was working full time here. 
I uh, can pretty much say I've worked on all the machines around the shop. Uh, I understand what they do. I understand what they're capable of. Um, and that gives me a leg up as when we're quoting jobs and also the capabilities of our employees and what they should be able to do with the different machines. Uh, it also allows me to realize where we need to go in the future and what capabilities are out there and it's ever changing. Uh, we need to increase our abilities with technology and the more you can do with technology and innovation, uh, the better off you are. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, you need to uh, do as much lights out machining as you can, uh, unattended, automated, uh, the less human intervention, the better. Um, and that's how we've been able to survive. As mentioned before, it's a family run company, but it goes much beyond our immediate family. Our employees are part of our family. Um, we treat them as we'd like to be treated. And it's, uh, it's, it's stood the test of time for many years. Here we are 70 years later. Uh, it is a mantra that my grandfather had and I think we're carrying it on today. Um, it's an interesting trade. It's a unique trade. Uh, there's not many people that do what we do. And as mentioned, uh, there's very few in the great state of New Jersey. Uh, there's been a mass exodus uh, from this state and this industry in general has uh, just fled overseas. Uh, cheap labor, uh, subsidies by foreign governments, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, why are we still here? Uh, we're well diversified. Uh, we have the latest and greatest of equipment. Uh, we service many industries. Uh, we haven't put all our eggs in one basket. And uh, quite frankly, uh, the, the family that started it, the LaMarca family, uh, coming to work every day uh, with my two brothers and, and my father, um, nothing could be better uh, to be able to, to fulfill your need in a trade and uh, share family time. I don't know that I would have gotten into this trade without them, that's for certain. Hello, my name is Luke. Um, I got into the business uh, kind of at a young age. Um, always came down here with our father on the weekends. Uh, Saturday was our day with him. Um, and we'd get to travel down here and we'd get to explore the shop and uh, see what he would do every day. Um, it was very informative, uh, very educational. Um, and we got to know everybody that worked here, which are part of our family now. Um, but growing up in this business, you kind of look around, you see what's going on, and you say, wow, that's really interesting. I, I think I'd like to try something like that. You get to use your hands every day. Um, and you see a raw piece of steel come in, and you say, what's going to happen there? And then all of a sudden, it goes through this machine, and you see a beautiful part come out. And you say, I want to learn how to do that. That's kind of what got me into this is, all right, I think I could do that. I think I'd like to make something, have a tangible object in my hand at the end of the day. So uh, our current responsibilities are the day-to-day -day operations, uh, making sure things are moving through the machines properly, checking some of the programs. But uh, in all honesty, we have some great guys on the floor here that do an amazing job programming um, and cutting steel. So it makes my job a lot easier just knowing that they're here and um, watching them move through these pieces the way they do. Um, so that's one of my main jobs, making sure things are flowing through the shop, but also there's some administrative stuff, dealing with customers, um, really like having that interaction with them. But having this foundation of working in a shop uh, allows me to talk to them a little bit better. Um, and the instruction I've gotten from all of the employees here over the years has really been helpful. We really like to put our customers first and um, give them what they need. Um, we try to make sure we're always there to answer a call. Um, it, whether it's a repair or something new or if they have a question on a new part design, we go through a whole DFM with them. This way they can find out exactly what they need to have that perfect part molded for them in an expedite, in a quick time frame. Um, making sure they have everything they need at the end of the day. We try to keep that communication line open with them all the time. Um, and this way either a face-to-face -face or over the phone, um, we're here to help them out. 
Hi, uh, I'm Thomas Lamarca. Um, they call me TJ Lamarca. I'm the oldest of the three sons. I do the administrative work behind the scenes, and uh, I'm not very good on camera, so I'm out of here. Well, that's a wrap for LNZ. I hope you've enjoyed this tour as much as I have. If you want to know more about this family-owned, U.S.-made company, go to lztool.com. We look forward to seeing you again next time, and thank you all for watching.